When Hilary Swank won her Golden Globe for a Million Dollar Baby just a couple of weeks ago, she made a special point of thanking Grant Roberts. Little did I know we lived in the neighborhood. He is uh, the personal fitness trainer who helped her get into fighting shape. He also owns gyms on both sides of the border and in Saskatoon. So I'm very happy to have Grant Roberts here today. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. So that's a, that's a great job. I mean, I, I don't know how this all came about. Maybe you could tell me. Um, well, it all came about actually some people in, in Vancouver were instrumental in, that, in having that happen. Uh, Lifestyle Equipment, which is a company here that supplies uh, equipment for movie sets for Clint, and uh, my camel actually is a friend of Clint's. Um, Hillary had a trainer prior to me getting involved, but it just it wasn't coming along. It wasn't working out. She was actually losing weight, meaning her body was becoming catabolic. Well, she's about this big yeah, anyway, isn't exactly. she? Yeah, exactly. So uh, Mike and Clint had a conversation, and, and Clint was desperate looking for a trainer. So um, I got recommended, and I got the phone call. So. Right. So did you know who she was? No, I didn't. Actually, when, when Clint called me, I mean, the first thing I you said was... You knew who he was? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I was like, well, do you know what time it is? How'd you get this number? But actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, he, was, um, he was very, very gracious, and he, he just asked if I would, uh, wouldn't mind looking at, at this girl. He never really got descriptive as to who it was. So um, somebody mentioned the name Hillary. So I immediately thought, well, is, Hillary it, Clinton. is it Hillary Duff? Yeah, Hillary oh. Clinton. So I thought, a 16-year-old boxer? I'm not sure. But um, so I met Hillary uh, at Warner Brothers Studios, and uh, as she walked in, uh, I introduced myself, and I said, so you're an actress? And she said, well, actually, I'm an Academy Award-winning actress. And uh, well, no, not, not yeah, it was you. it was all in it was all in fun. So we um, we developed a great relationship, and uh, we're we're friends to this day. So what you accomplished with her was she weighed 110 pounds or something. Mm -hmm. Like my right arm weighs 110 pounds. So that's what 110 pounds looked like. Yeah. So then what happened? What did you do to her? Um, well, I also learned that we only had nine weeks before filming was to begin, and that she was going to face the real life 140 pound champ 140 pound champion of the world, uh, Lucia Riker, who was in the uh, the film is the mm -hmm. actual champion. So here we have a 110 pound girl who's never boxed, who's never really trained uh, hard before, and who's got to learn all these lines. And She's a bit athletic though. I mean, very I, athletic, yeah, very yeah. athletic, and she responded incredibly well to the training. Um, so we had, uh, we put 20 pounds on her, which is a lean muscle mass gain. It wasn't just putting 20 porky, pounds on. Porky, porky. And we actually brought her body fat down at the same time, so it was quite an accomplishment. No kidding, mm -hmm. nine weeks. This is something that should take how long? Um, actually, her first trainer said to her, we'll be likely to get 10 pounds in a year. That's why he wasn't her trainer anymore. So. I see. So yeah. you're feeling quite proud of yourself, aren't you? I, well, how can you not? Yeah, I'm very Well, no, very happy e with exactly you. right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was the uh, process? The first day you met her. So, how do you do? Actually, Clint called me three times that day and said, "What do you think? What do you think?" And and I was reluctant to commit myself to it because, with nine weeks and and I didn't know her really, and I thought, well, she's a prima donna and she's not going to listen. You know, I really don't want to be involved. Um, so I I took her to the gym that night and she absolutely convinced me she was on board. And the rest is history. Right. So, what did you do first? Um, I took her to the, the gym and I evaluated yeah. her. You know, evaluated. She did her all the see. machines and all the stuff and all the. Yeah, we picked a specific body part, and I just wanted to see how intense and how willing she was to listen, and um, she was on board. Right. And uh, did you have to bulk her up in other ways, um, like what, food? Oh yeah, food was a huge component. Nutrition plays about sixty percent of the role in, in making a transformation like that. And uh, actually, I'm, I'm just completing my book called Unified Diet, which I've heard about this. Yeah, it outlines all the principles, and it's really an education. Um, I talk about food as um, as really the most potent weight management drug on the market. I refer to it as in your market, you know, the grocery store. It is the fuel. It is, it, and it, it has uh, reactions in your system that can transform you completely. And people just need an education. So that's the premise of the book: is to provide that you know the basic education that's required and how it'll work for you specifically. And it, you, you practiced what you preached Absolutely. on her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it impressive? Because I didn't know who you were, to tell you the truth. And there she stands up. I happened to watch the Golden Globes, and there she is. She stands up and she thanks you. Yeah. You must have nearly fallen off your perch. Yeah, it was actually, there's a funny story besides that. I was here on the West Coast when, when that was being shown, and there's a tape delay. My mother was in Saskatoon, and uh, I was about halfway through watching the show, and my mother calls me, and she goes, did you see it? And I went, no, I'm actually I'm watching the awards right now. Don't tell me. I don't want to know if she wins or not. She goes, okay, I won't tell you. And I won't tell you what she said about you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, oh yeah. my God. Yeah. So no, it was very thrilling. And then she say, see ya, click. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you've been in this uh, body business pretty much all your life, all your adult life? Uh, if I was actually an adult, I'd say yes, but yeah. Are you an adult yet? Not really. Uh, I hope you're not. You're still playing, I, I don't you? want to be an adult. You're a big bruiser. Well, it's the shirt. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> uh, so, when did you start 
working out? Uh, like Actually, I opened my first gym when I was 17. And, uh, really? I, mm -hmm. I won the Canada's when I was 19. And, uh, oh, that's me when I was 17. <laughs> yeah. That's 19. Gentle God. Right. What, like, was Arnold your... Uh, Hero? Um, well, he was. I don't know if I've ever what had. What are a those bits? Uh, those triangle That's bits. A more go back to one. that. Go back to that other picture. <laughs> Look, what are those things called? Now, see, a normal guy. What are those wing things on the side uh, there? Behind? They're actually glue-on styrofoam, but um, they get molded to the body, so you can't. Yeah, really yeah, see you them. can't really see it. How do you get those things? Now, I don't want any, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's hard work. Yeah, yeah. endless. And How much food. do you uh, do a day now? Um, I actually, less is more. I train about 45 minutes to an hour a day. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, right. That seems not like a lot of less. I mean, that seems like a lot more. Um, no, really, you know, uh, the biggest problem that most people have is overtraining. And that's also outlined in the book. It talks about... Uh, well, where is this book? I, do it's I... coming out this summer, but it'll be available on my website, um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so you're quite proud of this, aren't you? I'm very proud of it, yeah. Are you going to go to the Academy Awards, or are you just going to watch it? I'm waiting to see, but I'm definitely watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll bet you are. Okay, we'll take a break. I'll be right back. Welcome back. My guest is Grant Roberts. He owns fitness centers in Western Canada and in the U.S. Uh, uh, who are the most fun to train, Canadians or people in Los Angeles? Uh, you know, everyone is, and I, I get asked a lot, um, you know, who are some of the you know, higher profile people. I'm not asking that question. Well, some people, sometimes I get asked what's the most significant change I've made to people. Right. And, um, well, the one she'd I, be the one, though, wouldn't she? She's one of them. Yeah. Um, one of them is actually a girl that I dated for a while, um, in just four and a half months. She dropped what she termed uh, four, uh, about 270 pounds of useless weight. She left me. 270 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't even paying attention to you, and that was a joke. Are, is that what you weigh? 270? Yeah, about that, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, is that good for you? No. No. <laughs> uh, but uh, you're, you're not uh, porky. You're just big. Yeah, well, muscle's very dense, and it weighs yeah. a lot more. So in, when, you, when you see Hillary in the movie, she was about 130 pounds. Yes. Um, but it was very compact and very, very dense. Yes, but she wants her old body back. Apparently. She does, and she kept seven pounds, though, and she loves her new body. Uh -huh. So it's just a little rounder or a little firmer? Or just a little, a little more Her shape. arms looked fantastic in that yeah, dress. Yeah, everything looked fantastic on her. She did it a is, great job. It is true. Mm -hmm. Would you get a crush on her? No, 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 no. Purely professional. Absolutely. Um, how did you get into this uh, bodybuilding thing? I started um, for football and um, found out that as a team sport, that if your team's no good, you don't get much recognition. So I just switched the weights and uh, also really enjoyed the strength events. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you were in a bad accident, a bad car accident. You, uh, it seems to me we have a picture of the car uh, after they dragged you out of it. Um, this is a, a real big symbol for you, isn't it? That, that car and that racked up. What is that car? Uh, was it a Chevy? It was a Corvette, yeah. yeah. You, actually, if you look at the windshield, you can see an imprint of myself because I actually ejected myself through the sunroof and the car uh, rolled over and landed on top of me. How old were you? I was 26. Right, and you had a Corvette. Yeah. Yeah. It was stolen. It was stolen. No. It was not. <laughs> you know, I, because you're such a serious man that when you make these jokes, I'm not ready for them. Uh, I, I guess I didn't expect you to be a stand-up comic, which is what you are, too. Uh, anyway, you were kind of a fly-through kind of guy in that car. Were you going too fast? Um, slightly. Yeah. yeah. And so you hit something. Yeah, actually, I hit a coyote, and the car um, went end over end. Right. And the coyote perished, uh, but you didn't. No, luckily. Yeah, what happened to you? Um, quite a bit. Um, I remember rolling into the hospital and looking at the doctors, just shaking their head, basically giving the symbol like this is a waste of time. Uh, really? Yeah. So this is not good. No, but I thought to myself, that's not really the direction I want to go with this. So uh, um, I was in the hospital for a very prolonged period of time. It took me about a year just to learn how to breathe again. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it was a very arduous. Learn process. how to breathe. You mean yeah, you were I on a thing? I punk yeah, I was. I was on life support for about three months. Yeah. Oh, your poor mother, your poor family. <laughs> they must have gone, really, uh, they must have been like a vigil. Yeah, well, they're very, very supportive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you never thought you weren't going to make it? No, never. Uh, my biggest concern is how do I get back, and the doctors were very unsupportive um, to, to supporting my athletic career. They just right. said, 
just Forget be able to be alive. Yeah, they're saying don't even think about that. Don't worry about that. So what happened to your uh, your enormous frame as you were lying there uh, uh, all those months? Uh, it shrunk yeah. significantly, but you know, in, in some ways, that's what actually kept me alive. My body became catabolic, and it survived off the muscle tissue. Well, what is catabolic? Meaning you're, you're, Just your you're body, devouring yourself? Yeah, you're basically devouring yourself. When your body doesn't utilize fat or carbohydrates as a fuel, it will go to the next source, which is muscle. So when they let you out of the big house there, uh, how much did you weigh? Um, not very much. In fact, I wouldn't stand on a scale because I didn't want to know, but I was a skeleton. I was just yeah. an absolute skeleton. So uh, unrecognizable. Yeah, to myself. Right. And did you go to rehab then? No, I decided to do my own rehab. Um, I had a lot of nerve damage, and that's, I think, what really escalated my training, uh, even for the clients I have today, because I learned to train from a, a nerve uh, response, which is uh, very, very different than just your normal training. Uh, how is it different? Well, you're, re you're actually um, recruiting uh, nerve fibers as opposed to muscle fibers. You're going much deeper in the tissue. How do you do that? Um, basically, in the direction that you train with um, whether it's the, um, the amount of repetitions you do or the speed of the exercise you do, but constantly changing it, that's the, the biggest thing. So your body never adapts. Right, so it doesn't learn that the next thing you're going to do that's is right. what you did yesterday. That's right. Uh-huh, that, that is interesting. Mm. I never even thought about it. Why do so many of us really dislike going to the gym? I know that there are people that are addicted. I know there are people that go because they can't live with themselves or they don't go. And then there are others, some of us would admit it. Uh, there's something about going that, uh, I don't know. It makes me crazy. It's really a matter of getting over the hump. And for some people, it just takes a little bit longer. But, uh, you know, 12 weeks seems to be the magic number that if you can get yourself to 12 weeks, you're going to have some incredible changes. And at, at the end of 12 weeks, it's also change, time to change your routine up again. So, uh, right. yeah, it's just a matter of being persistent. And eventually, you'll, you'll adapt it as a lifestyle. Do you? It's, it's um, I, I wouldn't say fad. Uh, I think that it's become a change in people's lifestyle, especially in North America. But uh, there are an awful lot of fitness clubs out there. There are a lot of fitness clubs. It's a very competitive market, mm -hmm. and you know people need to be wary at the same time and, and make you know correct choices when joining clubs. Um, and you know the other thing that I think needs to occur is that we not, we have to get fitness and nutrition back in the schools. It seems like it's it's, right. it's been eradicated for whatever reason, and um, that's where it all starts. Yes. So that they're not all these kids going for McDonald's at lunch. You know, lifestyles have changed. Kids are sitting, they have well-developed thumbs from Nintendo, but that's really about it. And, you know, the, the food choices they're making aren't good, and they spend way too much time uh, sitting on a couch. So w what is your diet like? What, do you, what is your, uh, what do you eat? Um, I eat pretty much anything. Uh, and, well, you, you know, could what, if you're working on an hour a day. Well, that's, you know, that's it. Once you get to a level, that's the other benefit of, of exercise. It yes. allows you to have the freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. um, but in the diet itself, the, the unified diet, uh, it's a very low uh, carbohydrate diet, and it, it promotes some um, essential not, fatty acids. But no, not no carbohydrate. Uh, actually, not, uh, not no carbohydrates, but it's very, very selective. I only have green yeah. salads. This is what we did with Hillary. Uh, we yeah. only had green salads five days of the week, uh, except that you know that we did promote an insulin response, um, which is a high glycemic carb right after training, and that is maybe more technical, but that's yeah. actually to throw sugar back into the muscle cells. Right. So no, no oatmeal. Um, no, the five days of the week, no, very, very strict. Um, very high amounts of essential fatty acids in the form of flaxseed oils and, of course, high amounts of protein, uh, good quality protein. And um, two days a week, we would have cheat days. And that's, I did that really for, for two cheat reasons. Cheat days, it's only fair because it feeds your brain. It does. Glucose, yeah. your, your brain loves glucose, and um, it has a psychological and physiological effect. You've got a goal. You know that if your cheat day is Friday and Saturday, that you can make it. You can go, live for it. Yeah, I can only, I just have to wait till Friday. And then when Friday comes around and you have your cheat day, you're going, you know, it wasn't so bad, but you know you got one more ahead of you, and then the cycle starts over again. So it really right. works. Well, I think you're a very smart guy. Well, thanks. Well, obviously, yeah. you're a smart guy. Uh, Grant Roberts, he's a personal trainer, no kidding, and you can check out his web uh, site at, at mechafitness.com, yeah. And uh, he, you can see him in the movie. He's right there in the other woman's corner, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Great, thanks so much.